Uh, welcome to today's talk. My name is Howard Wu. I'm the Vice President, Global Head of Networks and GM for QCT, Quanta Cloud Technology US. Welcome to the talk this afternoon around the high level benefits of our liquid to air cooling solution. Um, now, for those of us who aren't too familiar with Quanta Cloud Technology, uh, we are a wholly owned subsidiary and our parent is Quanta Computer Inc. based in Taiwan. So many years ago, still have people will ask me where Taiwan is. I don't think we need to stress on that now in the last couple of years. Um, so one of the things that's interesting about Quanta is, uh, and I often get that question from people because we make a plethora of hardware. So I always get the, the question I always get from people usually is, so what is your core business and what do you guys actually do? And after a couple of years of working, um, I think if you are a technologist and you do subscribe to the idea that the network is the backplane and that every hardware that is attached on that network, whether it's a phone, a data center, or anything else in between, we are probably uh, the manufacturer of that hardware that sits on top of that network. So our core business, our, you know, our top line revenue is around the 36 to $39 billion mark, which puts us nicely in the Fortune 500 on a global scale. We've also been named one of the most uh, innovative companies and our core competence really is hardware, is manufacturing, supply chain, and excellence in engineering. Just give you an idea of some of our global footprints. We have a very, very heavy uh, presence right here in the United States. I would say we are, during the past uh, two and a half years, if you've been in the States, I know we have some visitors from overseas, but if you've been in the States and you've been among this pandemic with us, I would say we are probably one of the leading suppliers to our critical digital infrastructure. So if you have ordered food delivered to your house or have you watched Netflix online, and I would say a lot of those hard underlying hardware uh, is probably made by us. So to give everybody an idea who our customer base is, um, today our core focus is on the tier one cloud service providers, but we also expand to different uh, customer groups, such as enterprise, high performance computing, um, telecom networks. Telecom is an interesting one, as most people don't think of telecom as IT, but this ultimate convergence between the communications network and the compute side of things has certainly made it very interesting. And then also the next wave top 50 CSPs or cloud service providers. So to begin our talk today, for those of us that's been in the uh, sort of infrastructure and or digital infrastructure and data center side of the business long enough, I think we often talk about, you know, CapEx returns, OpEx investments, TCOs, um, which silo of hardware or which silo of organization do you live in? And I think one of the things for this talk today, we've always talked about the different form factors, right? We've talked about it at a server level, whether it's you know, full length, 19 inch, 21 inch, whatever size it may be. The other one is at the rack level. And then the third one is we often talk about data center scale. Um, how do you deploy infrastructure at data center scale? Um, for the purpose of today's talk, we're talking about our rack level liquid to air cooling solution. So one of the things I think the last, certainly the last five to 10 years, I think we as an industry have been thinking about is why sustainability matters. I remember probably 12, 13 years ago uh, when I was a young engineer, then I was thinking, you know, we need to build sustainability and why cloud matters and why virtualization matters is because the output of a single server from a carbon footprint is the equivalent of a 
Hummer H2 back in the days. Since then, Hummer as a brand has now turned into an EV company. Um, and uh, the world has changed a lot. Um, but the key is that data center usage and growth remains the highest on the power grid demand. And then the second thing is the carbon emissions really didn't get any better because we're still, you know, if you consider the energy source of your data center, if you're running in Virginia, it's probably coal, right? If you're running in certain parts of Canada, it's probably hydro. So it really depends on your geographic region and then the cleanliness of the source of your data center energy. And so that moves forward to today. Um, today, I think we as a globe and as an industry, we certainly face an energy crisis, right? And this energy crisis comes in many different ways. If you have been gassing up where in California, you'll see how much our gas prices have changed the last 14 to 16 months, right? We are now dealing in a world of very unstable in a macro political and economic environment. We know there is a war in Ukraine. We know there is tension in Asia. And we know we have a very serious inflation and interest rate issue here at home. But despite all of this, the appetite for more digital infrastructure, content, growth, demand continues to drive. Through the pandemic, we know it accelerated. And then even coming out of the pandemic, we certainly don't see a slowdown. And so how do we deal with all of this, with all of these variables in a world where now energy is so critical and energy being the largest part of any data center operator's OPEX? The answer, well, one of the things I remember um, 22 years ago, um, I was at a Semicon conference and we were talking about, you know, the 90s was all about CPU and horsepower, the race of the gigahertz. Then it was like, you know what? We really got to a point where we couldn't deal with heat dissipation anymore. So we now have to start going instead of single core in a single die in a package, we now have to go multi-core. And then the second we do multi-core, then it opens up a bunch of possibilities, but it also created a new race to heat. And so how do we manage that heat? And the whole premise of inside a data center has always been using massive amounts of power to power on all of your infrastructure and then use massive amounts of power to cool down the infrastructure you just powered on. So I think liquid cooling has been in the news a lot lately and we really, you know, if we, if we think about the bookends of how do you cool a single server, we have the sort of the traditional, let's call it air, right? So air cooling. Then it was about, okay, so the natural air, ambient air isn't cold enough, so how do we make the air colder, right? On the other hand of the spectrum, we now have something we call immersion. And in reality, we think immersion at scale really is not here yet. Uh, for the industry. And the challenge with air cooling is how, doesn't matter how cold you make the cold aisle to be, it really can't keep up with all these new generation of very dense and very hot CPUs and GPUs, IC type workload. So it is in our opinion, being a, you know, sort of a provider of massive scale infrastructure, that liquid cooling really gives us the best value and the best return on investment, uh, providing a very practical path to data center operators of today. We also have, from a rack level, um, like I said on the onset of this, of this talk, today's solution is really at the rack level. So how do you push sort of cooling from a chiller and a cold aisle perspective all the way down to the rack level. And that's really the solution we're providing. Um, how do you enable higher density, right? Now, 
We all know the business model in running a data center is mainly twofold, right? You run a data center to provide a service to generate revenue. That's one path. Then the cost of power is the cost of doing business. On the other hand, we do have data center operators and hosters, which business, their business model is power to the rack, and then it's about revenue per rack per footage. And then so on that part, how do you create more density and more revenue to the rack? And last but not least, all of us that have been in the business, we all care deeply about our PUE numbers. So how do you improve all of this? How do you do more while improving your cor corporate social responsibility and your ESG targets? I think that's something all of us, um, as an industry, I think we have a responsibility to our future generations. But certainly as an operator, this is also the challenge we've been tasked by most of you know, our internal stakeholders, certainly our executive team and our board members. Here I have a little video to show you, so if you'll excuse me. The next generation of servers is going to require more power as workloads push the latest chipsets and accelerators to their limits. As the thermal design power or TDP of chips goes up, the heat output of servers could be well above 1.5 to 2 kilowatts for a single node. For that reason, QCT offers a liquid cooling solution that is compliant with 19 NGIA and 21 OCP open standards with L11 flexibility, that no additional data center infrastructure needed and can be placed alongside any brand of traditionally air-cooled server rack. QCT's liquid cooling solution features its own built-in smart management enables self-adjustment functions such as CDU pump speed, fan speed, and fan zoning based on the workload of each server in the rack. QCT's liquid cooling solution starts at the cooling distribution unit, CDU, at the bottom of the rack that pumps coolant liquid up through the cold manifold which travels around the CPU to cool down each node. The heat from the CPU is then drawn to the liquid which then passes through a tube piping to the hot manifold. The hot liquid then travels to the top of the rear door radiators for heat dissipation. During the process, fans would draw heat out of the rack. Finally, the heat exchanged cooled down coolant will then enter back into the CDU to run a new cooling flow cycle. In this liquid cooled rack design, at the top of the rack is the management switch which is serial connected to every server in this 42U solution. 15 Quantigrid D54Q2U servers can fit beneath the switch followed by a 1U redundant power sled, and at the bottom sits the 4U CDU with its built-in DCSCM for smart rack management that connects to the switch to collect data from each server. For the CDU's management, rack communication is installed under an open BMC architecture. Additionally, a smart link encodes each individual server after booting, in order for the CDU to auto-detect the server's BMC data, monitor overheating, and leakage errors. Based on this smart link, the CDU would use this data to automatically analyze workloads and thermal data or status of the servers to then adjust CDU pump speed, fan speeds, and fan zones. A Redfish API web user interface is also used to monitor thermal conditions, leakage, and fan zoning for every node. For the fan zones, the CDU manages each node's workload to zone 16 fans into 2 to 4 fan groups to balance the coolant's temperature and decrease power consumption. And for serviceability, each individual fan can be taken out, and 4 fans are grouped into one fan board where each fan board can also be opened. The CDU and its coolant filter are also hot swappable, and the CDU pumps are all redundant. The fan zoning feature of the QCT liquid cooling solution effectively reduces fan duty which improves the power usage effectiveness or PUE. Aligned with QCT's deployment flexibility in liquid to air heat dissipation, rack utilization goes up as data center operational expenditures go down, which in turn helps our planet and environment. QCT's liquid cooling solution, your best choice towards an optimized green and sustainable data center.
right, so I hope you guys enjoy that video. Um, and to, to sort of further explain how, how the entire system is set up, right? So if you take a look at this architecture, standard 42U rack, um, we have our CDU at the bottom with dual and redundant pumps that circulates the coolant throughout the entire rack. We have this management switch on top, and then inside every single server, um, we can control everything down to the single fan speed. So it optimizes based on your workload and the heat it's generating based on real time. So the entire rack is a sort of self-contained ecosystem uh, down to the granular level. From a management perspective, we do, I think we're the first one that gives you the whole open BMC uh, um, management control for the entire rack. We also provide you know, Redfish uh, APIs. So for your data center management type workload, the northbound API you can integrate into your management system. That makes the management and the deployment of this at scale a lot easier. Now once, that's the front of the server rack. Now on the back of the rack, once you open the heat door heat exchanger, you can clearly see the coolant flows. We have the hot manifold, the cold manifold. Um, everything is built for both modularity and with serviceability in mind, right? So nothing is without redundancy, nothing is without easy serviceability, because as much as that coolant runs, uh, it still evaporates over time. So we made it an easy way to even do coolant refills. Uh, and we've certainly made it really easy to hot swap both the fan and uh, the pump and the filter. So, so what do we walk away with um, given our very innovative and very interesting uh, liquid air cooling solution? So first of all, um, I wanna say, you know, in the beginning of my talk, you know, we really started in this business almost a little bit over a decade ago and almost 20 years ago in, from a server side, then switches, then storage and full rack solution. And now we're really at a point where we're seeing massive scale infrastructure, the, both the management side and the cooling side. And this is really our way of contributing, which is bringing this rack level liquid cooling solution as our leading project within QCT's confines. Um, we certainly partner, one of our key partners is with Intel on the first air assisted in rack liquid cooling solution. Uh, for the purposes of this event today, we also provide open standards on both 19 and 21 inch OCP rack mount compliance. Um, we do the 2.4 kilowatt fan power saving and we of course, on the overall average, so just to give you guys an idea, uh, by having this system in place, it reduces about 11.8 Celsius, Celsius. I know we're in America, but it's Celsius. Uh, on the CPU temperature side, and really cuts about two thirds, you know, in terms of our power saving. So think about how much you're paying um, for your power, and I don't know, depending on how the next couple months look, that power cost might go up. Um, when, and on top of everything, we provide the remote start management and the open BMC architecture. So everything from a management layer and a control layer, we give you the tools. Um, last but not least, for the crew on the ground, redundancy and easy serviceability. We know what it's like to live, breathe inside the data center, and we certainly have those in mind when our engineers design our products. So, um, last but not least, Seeing is believing. We've all seen lots of slides. How many of them are true? So come visit us um, at our booth right there in A21. That's the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you.